Hi, and welcome back. Today we're doing two mitzvos because the first one's very brief. Mitzvah 34, it is a positive commandment to rest from work on the first day of Sukkot. Remember, we have two days of Sukkot outside the land of Israel, but since we're only discussing Torah commandments, only the first day of Sukkot is mentioned in this book. Uh, let's move on to Mitzvah 35. We'll, we'll have more to say about this. It is a positive commandment to dwell in a sukkah. Let's take a look inside, please. It is a positive commandment to dwell in a sukkah, hut or booth with a roof of branches, etc. All the seven days of the festival, the scripture says, you shall dwell in booths seven days. The entire seven days of the festival, one is to eat, drink, and live in the sukkah, both by day and at night. All the seven days, a man is to make his home an occasional place and the sukkah a fixed place. It is forbidden to eat a regular meal outside the sukkah. On the first night, it is a duty to eat at least an olive's amount of bread in the sukkah. Thereafter, if one wants to eat bread, he has to eat it in the sukkah. If he wants to eat fruit, he may eat it outside the sukkah. A young child who has reached the age of training has the obligation by the law of the sages. It applies everywhere and every time for males, but not for females. Okay, plenty to explain here. So let's get to it. Uh, it's a seven-day festival, although, as we know, there's also Shemini Atzeres and Simchas Torah, but seven days in the sukkah. What people do on the eighth day of Sukkot is also very interesting, right? Since we have two days, as we just mentioned, we have two days for the first days of the holiday, so we also have a second part of the holiday. Now, why do we have two days for the first part of the holiday? Because we're always in doubt, right? That was the thing. They were always in doubt. The people who live far away from the land of Israel couldn't find out when the month started, so they had to observe two days. Okay, fine. So the same thing applies to the seventh day of Sukkot. We don't know whether it's the seventh day of Sukkot. Or, which is known as Hoshana Rabba, by the way, we don't know if it's the seventh day of Sukkot or if it's, in fact, the sixth day of Sukkot. Right? That's why we always have these, these doubts, right? We always function out of doubt. We always keep two days. So if that's the case, what does a person do on the eighth day of Sukkot? Do they sit in the Sukkah? And how much do they sit in the Sukkah? And there are varying customs. There are people who sit in the Sukkah but don't say a blessing because it's unclear whether or not it is, we're not certain whether it's Yom Tov or not. Uh, other people, my custom, which I got from my father, was to say Kiddush in the Sukkah and then to go inside. Uh, my personal custom is that unless it's really ideal conditions, if there's any reason to be uncomfortable in the Sukkah, I am particularly stringent on the question of discomfort in the Sukkah, and therefore I just go inside. Now, let's talk about that issue, and that is a person is only obligated to sit in a sukkah the way they would sit in their house. So, if, for example, you are uncomfortable in the sukkah because it's too cold, you don't have to sit in the sukkah. It's raining, obviously, you don't have to sit in the sukkah unless you're Lubavitch, and that's a whole separate trip. Um, you don't have to sit in the sukkah if you are uh, unable to sit there and live there normally. Uh, we had a situation once where we had a family over for sukkahs and we had bees because bees love the sukkah. So uh, we had bees. So we had to go inside. That's it. You don't have to sit out there and get stung. It's not a mitzvah. You don't have to sit out there and be afraid that you're going to get stung. It's also not a mitzvah. Okay, however, if one has a sukkah, they should try to dwell in it as much as possible over the course of the days of sukkot, including, if possible, sleeping in the sukkah. Now, when it comes to meals, so you can't have a meal on which you would say an al or bench, which means you can't have a meal from things that are made from grains, the five grains anyway that the land of Israel is praised for. And you can't have, a, you can't have wine outside the sukkah. You can't have, um, you can't have a full-blown meal. However, if it's not something you'd make a, Borin a fasho, uh, sorry, if not something you make an alamichya or bench over, but rather something you make a borin a fashos over, a simpler food, that's allowed. Uh, I uh, have uh, many, many times, many, many times, um, in order to eat indoors and not have to sit outside in the sukkah in less than favorable conditions, but tolerable conditions. So when it's tolerable or less than favorable, and I really want to eat inside, so fried rice. You gotta go to you gotta go to your favorite Chinese restaurant and get yourself a good fried rice. You can eat a nice big meal, right? But it's not considered a meal for the purpose of 
eating in the sukkah because it's not from the seven grains. Um, a couple of other things, five grains, I'm sorry. Uh, a couple of other quick notes about uh, things that are mentioned in here. Men are obligated and not women because it is a time-bound commandment. How is it a time-bound commandment? Because the essence of the commandment is that on the first night of Sukkot, we eat in the Sukkah. That's the most significant and important night. If you can get into a Sukkah the first night, that is the best thing. That's time-bound already, first night of Sukkot. After that, there's an obligation, the first night of Sukkot, to eat in the Sukkah, if at all possible. After that, it's a nice thing to eat in the Sukkah, but you don't have to. So it's a time-bound commandment because it's, in effect, only on the first night. Therefore, women are exempt. Uh, women certainly can feel free to sit in the sukkah. I should point out, however, that in situations where there's no room in the sukkahs, well, women don't eat in the sukkah. The best example I can give you is that I have a friend who invited his mother once he bought a home uh, out of New York City, out of Brooklyn, actually, he invited his mother to come over for sukkahs, and it was the first time that she sat in a sukkah. Because in Brooklyn, there's very little room. There's just these sukkahs on the sidewalk. There's no room. So the men eat in the sukkah, and the women don't eat in the sukkah, right? Because they're not obligated to eat in the sukkah. Uh, so she had never, her entire life, this was a woman who at the time was in her 50s or early 60s, had never been in a sukkah. That's why. It's not straight discrimination against women. It's just a simple question of women are exempt from time-bound commandments. Therefore, they're not obligated. She was never in a sukkah because there was never room for her in the sukkah. Okay. Uh, gee, that's a lot. Um, I think we've covered everything. So next time, our next mitzvah will be mitzvah number 36. It is a positive commandment to take up the four species, the lulav, the esrog, hadassim, and aravos, on the festival of Sukkot. We'll take a look at that next time. Thanks for being with us. Bye-bye.